Good morning and welcome to The Soul Shop. I am your host, Phyllis King. And as always, I'm bringing people who have interesting stories and um, uplift us in life. And today is no different. And you know what? We have all kinds of feelings about Facebook, but the one thing it was based upon was connecting people. And that's what I've really started to enjoy about Facebook is really leaning into that in an intentional way, rather than thinking about all oh, my privacy and this and that and the other. So I stumbled upon a treasure on Facebook, which is my guest today, Harriet Tubman Wright. Started to notice her in my shared friends. And as I began to look at her work and the contributions she's making uh, on a daily basis, I, I couldn't stop myself. I had to get <laughs> into her world. I'm like, I need to know this woman. So let's get started by bringing you into the conversation first thing, welcome. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. I've appreciated uh, getting to know more about you through Facebook as well. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And I know we're all so busy and there's so much going on in the world. And it just feels like our, our space is so contracted, trying to squeeze everything in. So I know time is such a valuable commodity. And I do appreciate you taking the time to be here. So you, you're highly educated. You have an amazing use of language. I love the, the words you use when I look at your or your website, the right with a W, rightresort.com. There's so much to you. So um, rather than just sort of run down your resume, I thought it might be fun for you to talk to us about who you are and your point of view and your actual mission, because there's a lot to it. And I'd rather you tell people than me tell people. Thank you. I was actually raised in Oakland. I'm the firstborn and had a lot of responsibility for my sisters who were twins and my brother. Oh. So I was, uh, that's how I kind of got into this self-care, taking, <laughs> putting so much energy into caring for others. Mm -hmm. um, I finished school in, in, um, at Howard University actually, oh. and then came back to the Bay Area and got a master's degree in, in counseling. I thought education, but when I was involved in counseling, I was expected to fix students. And I could see uh, very early on that not only was that not my philosophy, but it was really hurting uh, black boys in particular who would always be sent fix them. They can't come back till you fix them. So I got out of uh, public school education and actually started working with the YW, the university YWCA. I was uh, the director of the Black Women's Unit. And so we did programming with students from Cal as well as women from the, from the community. And working with the Y actually really got me focused on working primarily with women, but it also enabled me to go to New York in 1979. Mm -hmm. uh, and from there, I went to Greece as, as a, a, a delegate for the World YWCA meeting. Mm -hmm. While there, I also worked for the, for the New York City um, Y, looking at the social significance of the Harlem YWCA. Mm -hmm because many of the entertainers who came back in the 20s and 30s, black entertainers could not stay at the hotel. So they stayed at the Harlem Y, y um, wow. WCA. Uh, from there, I had an opportunity to work in Africa. I had gone in 77 and decided I want to work. I want to live and work in Africa. So for two years, I lived in Ouagadougou. It was Upper Volta at that time. We know it now as Burkina Faso. And our primary mission was um, helping to deepen and dig wells. I mean, it only rained. We were in the Sahel, so it only rained a couple of times a, a year. It was, and so we were really, it was an integrate, rural integrated development project with lots of components. And I was the administrative um, person and reporting what we were doing. From there, I said, oh, I want to work in East Africa. I spent some time in India and decided I want to go to Kindy. I was in India. I was a, a, at a, an ashram 
And uh, the guru said, where are you going to take these padukas, these sandals? I said, well, to, to Kenya, because that's where I wanted to go. And lo and behold, I did get a job as regional representative for church world service. I was the first woman in that position. And so my territory was the entire um, east coast of Africa and islands in the Indian Ocean. And that's where and when I decided I want to, I want to have a place where I take care and be taken care of. And that was the inception of the right resort. <laughs> oh my goodness. So um, in, in a world travel, traveler, but you have this uh, uh, traditional um, I would say education and going into public service in the way you did, but mm -hmm. something called you into these other areas where you're exploring not only elements of the, the black experience, but also the human experience <laughs> and, and how you bring all of that together in some type of point of view, it seems. Um, when did the travel stop and <laughs> well, it, had, it hasn't stopped at this point? <laughs> a great, a great, great question. Um, my son was born in Nairobi, Kenya. Oh, okay. And uh, shortly after his birth, I was uh, had an interview with with women for for a position at the of executive director of the world YWCA in Geneva. And I did say I had a young child. I didn't say I was breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, they, they determined in Geneva that this was not an appropriate job for someone with a young, young child. So we returned, we, we came to back to the, to the States at that point. And here I am, you know, a single, a single mom and, basically in culture shock. I am spiritually connected to Africa and I'm physically in, it take, took me a year uh, just going to the grocery store and seeing a whole row of cereal or a whole row of bread. When in the marketplace, sometimes at the time of the year, there might only be eggplant. I mean, so it was just, it was, it was, it was very much a culture shock. Mm -hmm. However, I, that's when I got my uh, second degree. And then I went back into public service. I worked with the um, city of Oakland for several years. However, uh, and I'm serving the community. I'm happy. I'm doing great things. But I was working in in for the fire department and emergency services, which is a very structured commanding. Yes. And uh, I said no to something. And that was considered subordination. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had to go to a hearing. Oh and at that point, I said, you know what? These people don't even know who I am. I'm out of here. And that's when I said, I'm doing the right resort full time. I'm retiring and doing the right resort full time. So when I started, it was really around stress release and self-care. That was my initial focus and it's still the foundation. And I wrote this book, Releasing Stress, Creating Serenity, a body, mind, spirit, self-care primer for busy women and so the workshops or what i call salons i do were very much focused in in that area what i also realized from my experience and the experience of many women we're doing a job we're in a corporate setting or an organization or what and we're following somebody else's agenda and we're miserable because we're not being who we were born to be doing what we're doing what we're born to do. And so that is very stressful. We're unhappy and 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 it's and that's why I say souls calling is like are you listening? Yes. Your souls calling and for mm -hmm. me that is your divine purpose and passion what it what do you you know when you're around someone who's really into their thing there's an energy that is magnetic there's an energy you're attracted to them because they have this this magical energy 
-hmm. and passion. And this is, I mean, you love being around those kind of people. And that's what we should be doing. We should not, we didn't come to the world to be miserable. We came to the world to share our gifts, <laughs> you, I, <laughs> to share just, our talents. Yes, I, I, just, what, I love the way you've said every part of that. And I can feel the strands that are, are so deep inside of you. And we're going to talk so much more about your offerings because they're, they're so beautiful. But I, I have, I am curious, you know, <laughs> You, you had you were responsible for siblings to a certain degree i mean what was your spiritual framework growing up because you've really evolved into i i'm, I'm i consider you a spiritual teacher of the sorts you know and it's it's you know we can make a political statement and join political parties but sometimes your life is a political statement just by That's showing true. up in a certain way That's but true. where did your spiritual roots come because now you're like you're very expansive <laughs> and, and including all different kinds of nuance to your points of view uh, i grew up as a a methodist uh, which is pretty boring and uh, <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> it, it well, the particular church. Um, at at any case, um, I was introduced to um, Muktananda, Baba Muktananda, Swami Muktananda, in 1979, oh, and I yeah. had what we call an intensive, and that's when the 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 Kundalini is awakened. Yes, okay. And uh, so I, I studied Siddha Yoga for oh, many okay. years, and I'm still associated with, oh. with Siddha Yoga. Uh, mm -hmm. I made three trips to Ganesh Puri to his ashram, and I was there when he named Guru Mai, who had been formerly his, his translator, named her as a successor. So oh. this is the first woman, yes. who, so to speak. And um, we actually started a spiritual center, uh, a city yoga spiritual center in Nairobi. And it was the only one in Africa at that time. Uh, and, you know, we meditate, we chant. So that was part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, when I returned to Oakland and did this second master's degree, it was with, <laughs> it was in culture and uh, creation spirituality, Matthew Fox. And if you know Matthew Fox, he was silenced for a year because he supported, you know, women in the, in the, in the, <laughs> in church set in church leadership and you know when he the, when the year was up he says and as i was saying <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> but you know i did my masters on on ancient egypt the oh. um the mystical marriage between creation spirituality and ancient egyptian um spirituality um, then I became, I also became a member of East Bay Church of Religious Science, which is a new thought church. Right, right. And, um, you know, you take classes. I never became a, pra well, I am a practitioner, just not a licensed practitioner. Right. So that, and then I also studied with Barbara Marks Hubbard, a conscious oh. evolution. And so I have a certificate in, and there's a group of us who still meet monthly oh. around the conscious evolution and what's, yes. how, how are we bringing that forward? Mm -hmm. And so those are elements of my, of, of my spiritual, um, orientations, if you will. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many influences and I don't see a conflict in it at all. It's an mm -hmm. enrichment, so to speak. And it also is a tolerance for more than one spiritual perspective. I see. And I feel like that is, you know, really important because there mm -hmm. is value and, and so I have friends who are Muslims. I have friends, you know, who are Christians. I have friends who are yoginis. I mean, you know, it just, it's, to me, it's very, very enriching. And I think, again, it, it really speaks to the kind of tolerance and acceptance and willingness to grow 
mm-hmm. in ways that perhaps were 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 not a part of of our early uh, right. upbringing. Well, uh, it's interesting as I hear you share your process. What I don't hear in there is resistance to your process, which is something I have often done in my life. And I hear other people that are conflicted about choosing paths. But from the, your description and the way it feels, you just were called and went where you were called and what and you gave yourself to it. Is that correct? Or am I? Well, you know, I call myself a lifelong learner, yeah. a spiritual sojourner. Mm-hmm. and a cultural creative and so yeah. yes I was drawn and I you know I, I never I don't believe that I saw a conflict as as much as part of a growth process and as mm-hmm. I said I think it's been really in enriching and I hope that people I hope that people will be more open mm-hmm. to well, what, what, what's the value I can see in this? Or how can I learn or grow in this or from this and uh, be willing to accept differences? Because mm-hmm. the differences, the diversity, mm-hmm. hey, that makes it fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. It's so beautifully said. Um, yes. And so, you know, here you are, I, I, you feel like you have a mission to me, and but it's not <laughs> intentional, perhaps it's just you are a mission based person. And, you know, mm-hmm. we, we live in a time where, you know, diversity training, or, you know, just the idea of how wonderful it is to experience something other than yourself and, and a fear <laughs> about that. What's your point of view about that? And then also living in Oakland, which is a wonderful city, I'm highly familiar with it being from the Bay Area myself, but it has its challenges. And, you know, there's, there's, there's issues in that city that aren't getting adequate attention. I mean, I mean, this is uh, going in a lot of different directions here, but, you know, what's your point of view about all of that and your your role in it, if you see yourself as having one? Well, you know, I talked about um, soul's calling, and I think within the last three years, uh, three to four years, I've been moving toward this, this, what I call social change. Um, And it's based on, on seeing myself have a more play a more significant role in helping to usher in what i call positive change or revolutionary yes and revolutionary you know that i put a parenthesis around the r so people can be with evolutionary i actually believe that we are we know that we're going through a paradigm shift we know things will never be what they were before despite those who would like it to be Mm -hmm. we know that and i describe it as coming through the birth canal Mm -hmm. and you know when i talk about the divine feminine i can talk about the sacred masculine as well Mm -hmm. because there are conscious men there are woke men and there are woke women and there are those who are not so woke (laughs) True, (laughs) and it takes to for me and you know i always say that the day of the lone ranger is over and so when we come together collectively we come together in collaboration we co-create and you know i talk about the innate qualities of women which are birthing which are creating which are nurturing tending cultivating and it doesn't matter if you're cultivating a garden or cultivating a classroom these are our innate qualities and more of that i think um i i encourage to to come through as part of our co-leadership um i did have i was fortunate to go finally get to egypt physically i was there spiritually many years ago but physically in 2019 and we know the um the goddess ma'at had a role at in at when you came and to determine if you would have a good life your your heart was weighed against this feather and if it was in balance, you were deemed to have, you know, worthy of a good afterlife. If not, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, her qualities are balance, order, 
harmony, mm -hmm. justice. And these are the qualities that are called for in the world, not just in the U.S., in the world. Mm -hmm. I believe that Mother Earth will be here whether we are or not. And so, you know, it would be helpful if we as a as humanity mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know there are many uh, you know uh working around environmental justice and i just like to say social justice because mm -hmm. i think it incorporates environmental justice racial justice mm -hmm. economic justice health mm -hmm. justice we're talking about balance and order and harmony mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh and therefore uh peace you know people say no justice no peace and if we mm -hmm. want to come to a place where as a as humanity we can live in peace it means we're living with the enrichment of mm -hmm. diversity the enrichment of inclusion the gifts mm -hmm. that other cultures bring to the table ah <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, you know, when you ask about a movement, I get very excited about what's possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm, sometimes it, it does require a shift in our thinking or a shift in, um, in our activity or a shift in who we choose to work mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. or be with to co-create what uh what we want in the world and you know even though i'm an elder and i tend to work with older women i have so much love and respect for younger women not because they're techno technically <laughs> proficient but because they have more vested interest in the future when indigenous peoples talk about um seven generations then that's very relevant in terms of how we treat mother earth that mm -hmm. we all treat mm -hmm. mother earth mm -hmm. and um so it's it's a very exciting time and it's a time of of great opportunity if we're willing to transform on a personal level mm -hmm. if we're willing to transform those businesses and organizations and communities and do it collectively. Mm -hmm. Well, and when you talk about, you know, is your soul in, enlivened and involved in the processes of your life, you clearly are enlivened and involved <laughs> in your life in such a way that it's hard to see you not being in some position of leadership or wanting to use the influence of your energy to lead people into places. But is that uh, i mean i know you offer many wonderful courses and you speak about different topics and you have a you also have a a download book from your what is the book uh, five essential tools send the guide a spiritual guide for change makers so people should go to the website the right resort.com as a w-r-i-g-h-t.com <laughs> and download that book for free but um i mean it really feels like that's something that's i mean what who am i to say that would be in your in your path um but how do you stay so positive i mean you've seen so much and you take on so much how do you stay how do any of us stay positive when there's so much darkness in the world and heaviness um what's your view that's a really that? that's a really good question and um in my in my book releasing stress creating serenity you know i talk about maintaining healthy boundaries but i also talk about not watching listening to or reading mainstream news yes <laughs> yes you and i are on the same page there Absolutely. because uh you you will be depressed <laughs> you will be in the dark i mean they should it send it with a warning label <laughs> Because there are alternatives. And believe yeah. me, if it's something you need to know, somebody will tell you. Exactly. You will find out. Exactly. You, don't have to, you don't have to listen to it or exactly. read it. Exactly. And so that's one of the ways that that helps me stay focused. And you know, my spiritual uh, teachings are always for the highest and best. We don't know, you know, we like to say divine order, action, and outcome, because we don't know what the creator has in mind. It, but probably some it might just consider that it might be something more grand 
uh, or more, you know, more grand than what we could ever imagine because mm -hmm. of the possibility that we bring simply as human beings, potential pot pot possibility. Yes. And um, that's where, that's where I encourage and you know for women of course we have responsibilities we have responsibilities at home and outside of the home mm -hmm. um and yet if we look to history the matriarchal cultures and we look to where we are now some some more feminine energy <sighs> could make a very big difference and yeah, is, making a difference, is making a difference. I mean, yes. we are seeing women in leadership yes. and I'll be quite okay. frank. My, my birth name is Harriet Yvonne Wright. I, when I retired and <laughs> retired and, and decided I'm going to um, devote full time to the right resort, I honestly felt I've left the the plantation. So I am taking on the business name of Harriet Tubman Wright. And I if you it. know the story of Harriet Tubman, yeah. when she went to freedom, she felt a responsibility to go back for her family and those. And she mm -hmm. said very clearly with her shotgun, there is no going back. She have these spells mm -hmm. and she says, you're either going to be free in the North or you're going to be free right here. Yes. <laughs> with her yes. shotgun over you, which yes. meant this is, you know, this is the North Star. And every one of us have a North Star. Yes. We have a goal. We have a passion. We have a desire. We have a motivation. Mm -hmm. We all have a North Star. And it is our responsibility, our duty, our purpose to go for it, mm -hmm. to go for it with all we've got. And yes. to call in those resources and to call in the ancestors. You know, we have people who are with us, but, you know, the ancestors learned something in their time. And they're always waiting just to be asked for mm -hmm. their help, their support. Mm -hmm. And I really love <laughs> the notion that I, I can ask, I can pray, mm -hmm. I can meditate, mm -hmm. all of these practices that help keep me focused and centered and positive. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's so funny because you referred to yourself as an elder. And, you know, I received that word really as the more of your wisdom and experience and the mm -hmm. culmination of uh, all this work and processes you've done, but mm -hmm. you vibrate as a teenager to me. <laughs> Well, I, and with the enthusiasm and optimism, and I, it's not idealism, it's really you've, you've seen the light, essentially, and you, that, that North Star is calling you to it. So um, I could see why you would really resonate with the, you know, very young people as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so they, they call on me and, and you know, I, I am definitely an elder. And one of the things that I recognize is that, you know, in the Jewish community, you have the bat mitzvah and the bat mitzvah. And in indigenous cultures, people go through a rites of passage when they're, you know, adolescents. I want a rites of passage for elders because we have another level of responsibility when, and I asked, I'm part of a, a what we call the village, those of us who studied with Maladoma and Sabonfu Somme when they came uh, to this country. And we've stayed together for 25 years. We, oh meet, we meet monthly, we've done fundraisers yeah. to help um, uh, pay, you know, school children have to have school uniforms and books to go mm -hmm. to school. And so we would mm -hmm. raise funds to support them in that effort. And so I asked when I turned 60, which was a while ago, to be initiated as an elder because I felt I had a responsibility. And now, considerably beyond 60, I'm saying, I want us to create a rites of passage for mm -hmm. elders because we have another level of responsibility. Mm -hmm. We have a giving back. There mm -hmm. is a, there is 
uh, a responsibility to give back and to share. We've learned some things. It doesn't mean we know it all, but we've learned some things that we that we are committed um, to share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, like I say, I mean, so many of us. I, I remember, um, you know, when these cell phones came out, and you know, the the grandparents wanted to be able to communicate with their right. grandchildren, right. so you were forced to learn. Yes, yeah. uh, you know, something that felt foreign and unusual. I was with someone yesterday, and I said the word typewriter, <laughs> and. <laughs> I, I said, just, 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 just know you're talking to your grandmother. Okay. Just, <laughs> just know you're talking. And, you know, I, I talked to these young guys, you know, get trying to get tech support. And I just look, man, you're just talking to your grandmother, just understand <laughs> the context. <laughs> and it's like, they're so entertained. Oh, you've made my day. Oh, it's funny. It's <laughs> funny. Well, I just love your view about this. And it's not a hierarchy, but it's really honoring the stages of life. You know, I think we in modern culture here, we're always trying to qualify and quantify our experience in some limited term. And you aspire so much to a higher wisdom. You're always you seem to see the value in the moments and are helping us see that as well. You know, I'm looking at these, some of these offerings. I only picked out a few um five essential tools to co-lead the revelation or the re revolution body mind spirit fundamentals for feminine leadership resistance or revolution to um space global transformation i can't read my handwriting <laughs> <laughs> you know and the rewards and uh reasonable of a elderhood i wish i could read my hand right we're talking about that oh so it was the rewards and responsibility oh, responsibility so you have yeah. you have all these very specific offerings that are empowerment based and really giving us a guide to how we do it i i um i think of my work as um healing uh yeah. empowerment and transformation mm -hmm. and um so those the things that you were reading um are some of the thing you know i talk about feminine presence i talk about holistic health and um in this in this guide five essential tools i talk about self-care i talk about soul care i talk about um um expressive arts and sacred ritual and guidance so it's really a kind of rites of passage yeah and if should you want to move further through this journey because it is a journey mm -hmm. then you can seek guidance for um some of the programs and one of the things i'm most excited about is an upcoming course activating uh women's revolutionary leadership it's a six-week course that'll start in november uh, and it really is about looking at what it means, what does revolutionary leadership mean? And I've spoken a, a bit about it in terms of the kinds of qualities, mm -hmm. RNA qualities, but also looking at women leaders past and present. Who, who are the people that you that you admire and respect and what can you learn from them? And really defining well for me personally but for us collectively what is it what where do we want to focus our is it at at the school is it at the hospital is it at our community center is it with our political leaders you know where where do we want to focus um our energy because again and our talents and gifts this you know sometimes we we rediscover or allow uh, gifts that we've buried to be re uh, to re-emerge and really inform what and how we are giving in the world because ultimately it is I mean I've always been in service and that's that's what it is it's 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 service 
and it is healing it is empowering mm -hmm. it is transforming and ultimately liberating <laughs> yes yes well and this 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 six week course in november i mean uh it's a, le a pathway to leadership say it again i, I know i have it uh, activating uh women's revolutionary yes. leadership so, so i obviously you've spoken to women you've watched women where i mean where do we get stuck in this process and how do i mean i don't want you to give the whole class away today but <laughs> how, what's a first step because i think we do get tripped up by what culture throws at us and we get stuck on culture's message versus the inner message of how we do that and i think the inner message is really important i'm glad that you said that because how many times have we gotten an inkling it was our intuition and we overrode it and then mm -hmm. we got into trouble mm -hmm. and so trusting our intuition sometimes we have dreams that are speaking to us sometimes just in our spiritual practices we get a, a aha mm -hmm. and I, we have to tr we have I, I believe we have to trust those or give it be willing to give it a chance. Anytime we are frustrated or discouraged, it means we are, it means it's an opportunity to look at our true essence. What is our true, who, who are you really? And what are you here to, mm. to be and do and have? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that's just being in the silence. Sometimes that's taking a walk in nature. Whenever I, I sometimes when I am frustrated, I'm mad, I'm just, oh, it's hard I for me to imagine the that ocean be that way. But okay. I go to the ocean and I throw it out to the waves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I let it go that way. Yes. And then I yes. can come back lighter and fresher and open to a whole new perspective sometimes mm -hmm. just sitting you know so spending quality time in nature is one of the most important things also you know go to the spa get a <laughs> massage <laughs> Okay. In the hot tub <laughs> under the stars. <laughs> yes. I mean, these are the, you know, and of course, I absolutely believe in prayer and meditation and asking the ancestors for help. <laughs> well, you know, you're, you're so, the way you speak and your energy and the perspectives you have are, are extremely inspiring and, you know, make me feel like I can do anything. But you, some of the things you're, to. <laughs> well, you're speaking about takes a lot of courage. I mean, so much of it, some of us just, it takes a lot of courage to embrace or receive or make those shifts. I mean, how, how, how do you find that courage? Where do you get it? I mean, you seem to just have an overflow. Of it. <laughs> well, no, I, that's a really great question because no one that has accomplished anything accomplished it without courage mm. and without confidence and without support but they didn't accomplish it alone yeah. and i think that's again the key i keep using the word co-create collaborate collective you're not doing it alone mm -hmm. and and when you can feel the camaraderie the mm -hmm. the cheerleading yeah. and support of others and because we are supporting one another we are mm -hmm. mentoring guiding coaching learning from one another we each have something to bring to the table yeah. and you know with Shirley Chisholm well you know I'll bring my own chair well that, you know what <laughs> I'm I'm bringing my table and my chair and my and my sisters <laughs> <laughs> <Mama. laughs> that's great that's great we're here now yes yes 
Okay, so all these incredible offerings at therightresort.com, a free download book. I mean, there's so, much, there's so many things to look at on the website. You have the, the course coming up in six weeks, activating your... Activating women's revolutionary leadership. Women's and there'll be, there'll be more on it uh, yes. in, in Facebook and on the website. Mm -hmm. I am contacting people individually and um do you is, do do you do one-on-one -on -one or just groups of oh yeah point? if you go to the contact section of my website okay. you'll see an opportunity to schedule you know some options to schedule time with me and so that's that's the best and, and is way. that all on zoom or is that in person or a combination it'll be on zoom it'll okay. be on zoom they, they'll mm -hmm. be recorded and um we're going to have a good time. Oh, I, I am no doubt. There is no doubt of, I know it. Yeah, I will certainly be promoting that a lot. I'm, I'm wondering if I can take it. I have to see if I can squeeze that in myself. Sounds, sounds amazing just to be in your energy and feel your enthusiasm and, and the richness of your experience um, as an elder. I, 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 it's really hard for me to absorb that word, but... Uh, well, I, I better be an elder than an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> well, so, I mean, you're just, you never stop. I mean, you've been in go since day one, it seems like, um, and I expect you'll be in go till you make a transition at some point in the mm. very far future, I would hope. Mm. But what's next for you besides the day to day and supporting people and offering your wisdom? Is there something for you coming up or is it all a collective experience? Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to Jamaica where there's oh. a group of us we call our, what's calling in the one. Oh. And we've been meeting for a while and now we've decided, oh, we're going to be on holiday in the grill. <laughs> make a next Good. year. Excellent. Uh, so I'm looking forward uh, to that. There is an opportunity to go back to Egypt. I would like to go back to Egypt. I'm not sure mm -hmm. when that will, when that will occur, but it's something that I want to do. Uh, there are still places in the world that um, that I want to go, and uh, so why not? <laughs> so you, you seem to have a particular affinity for Egypt, and then you said Africa and Kenya, and you're, I mean, and when you go there, is it because uh, you feel a certain something, or is it what you learn, or just noticing the well, differences uh, culturally and spiritually? Well, I, you know, we, they, when they discovered Lucy and her name is Dinkanish, uh, that prove, we, you know, humanity has come out of the horn of Africa yeah. and there is so much wisdom in the, in the pyramids, in the temples. And, you know, we know that Plato and others, I mean, Egypt was invaded by many different cultures but if we just look at humanity alone and moving from 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 that area there's there's quite a bit of of wisdom spiritual wisdom and otherwise from from um from egypt and and other parts of africa as as well um when we when and so for me as as a black woman though that's a kind of roots experience mm -hmm. okay. of course i recognize that i have scottish blood in me from <laughs> from you know my my on my father's mother's mm -hmm. side okay. um i've been to england i've never been to scotland you know i've i've traveled i've i've been blessed to travel but there's still i want to go to saint lucia you know there's still places i want to go and uh when i feel it's safe to travel then that's what i'm going to do i mean if we're coming in this form at this time why not have fun and you know a lot of times you were talking about oh dark and what 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 sometimes just a shift in our thinking mm -hmm can make a shift in our experience because they say you are what you think mm. and 
you know, why not? I mean, you know, if these people are <laughs> taking flights to the moon and everywhere else, people didn't realize, didn't imagine that that was possible. So whatever you choose, whatever you believe, whatever you think, that's going to be your experience. Yeah. So, so think about having a fun experience. Yeah. Create it in your mind and let it be created in your life. <laughs> I love that. It's it's so true. And, and and you you show us the path so clearly. And if we can get out of our own way and feel <laughs> our own power, uh, I think we can follow in your footsteps. Well, uh, the website is the right resort, W-R-I-G-H-T <laughs> resort and the uh, to safari to success i mean i just love the way you use language um and there's so much to peruse but certainly we want to keep an eye on that november 2nd um i don't know why i have such a mental block with the title but it's activate activating women's revolutionary leadership see i know what it is i just can't say it but well you just you just you just join the class and you'll be good <laughs> <laughs> and then you're on facebook and your website and is beautiful yeah. and yeah. i'm just so grateful for the work you're doing and the contributions you're making and the inspiration you're providing for people to believe in themselves and take those steps i just really am quite appreciative and also for your time with me i just feel honored and you are indeed a treasure i was correct uh, and thank you so so much for being here today i appreciate you reaching out and i've been i've enjoyed it i've had fun and uh, i commend you on on the work that you are doing and helping to bring um to your audience an amazing array of people thank you so thank you of course thank you until next time until next time. Peace and blessings. <laughs>